Hello everyone and welcome to today's masterclass. I'm Karen Doyle and I'm direction, uh, sorry, Operations Director of CTAM Europe. I'm pleased to introduce you to today's presenters. We have Louise Cottrell, who is CTAM Europe's co-chair and her everyday role is SVP Affiliate Partnerships at AMC Networks International. Alongside Louise, we have today's Masterclass presenter, Jörg Niesing, Senior Affiliate Professor of Marketing at INSEAD. We're thrilled to have Jörg here with us today. He's one of the faculty members who teach our CTAM Europe Executive Management classes at INSEAD each year. This year's programme is happening in November and we're expected it to be a sellout again this year. Jörg will show a video shortly, which will give you an insight into the programme. Today's masterclass is scheduled for 45 minutes and will include a Q&A session at the end, which will be moderated by Louise. If you have any questions, please submit them using your Q&A button. And if you have any further questions after the webinar, you can email info at ctameurope.com. So sit back and enjoy, and I will now hand you over to Louise and Jörg. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Nice to know everyone's joined our webinar today. So really a quick introduction from me before we go into the webinar itself. As you can see, um, I'm still at home and I'm sure most of you are at home as well. You may be in the office, but that might be just partly or in, in shifts. Um, but wherever you are, things have definitely changed for you and everyone on this webinar. I think whilst we knew um, things were evolving and have been for many years across our industry and of course, across our environment as a whole, wow, have things just accelerated and, and very fast at that. COVID-19 has pretty much changed all our worlds overnight. And I think we've done a great job, all of us, of adapting both personally and, and professionally to, to this change. But of course, we've also had no choice. We, we've had to adapt uh, of something that's happened so quickly. But it has been a profound shift um, in how that we're using digital technologies now, how our customers and clients are working digitally as well. And, and some companies are, are clearly further ahead in their transformation than, than others. But I think the main point here is that to thrive, and in many cases just to survive, transformation is essential to profitably grow a business in what is now a very, very disrupted world. And I think INSEAD, the executive management program, for many, many years has been dealing with the digital revolution. It has been on the way a while. But of course now, things have changed very, very quickly. And so um, I'll introduce you to Jörg Niesing, who is going to present, optimize and digitize customer experiences in an agile world. He's the Senior Affiliate Professor of Marketing at INSEAD, and he will talk to you more about the course and about the topic at hand. So here is Jörg, thank you. Thanks a lot, Louise. Uh, yeah, also from, from my end, a very warm welcome and uh, thanks for the introduction. Louise and, and, and Karen. I mean, we only have uh, roughly 45 minutes and I also, as we said, wanna leave some time for Q&A. Uh, so, so let me uh, dive right into it. I mean, uh, some of you uh, might know me, I don't have to talk uh, a lot about myself. Uh, and uh, as Louise said, I'm a senior affiliate professor at INSEAD and all my work I, I'm saying is uh, at this triangle, digital transformation, data analytics, and customer centricity. And uh, I mentioned this uh, over the last five years in my classes, I always mentioned I'm writing a book uh, on this. And um, as you might have seen, uh, I finally published it last week. Uh, so if, you, if you're interested in, in also diving deeper into this topic, um, yeah, feel free to take a look at our website, um, b2bdigitaltransformation.com, which my co-author and myself really um, designed as, as a knowledge uh, platform. But with this, I mean, let me, uh, as um, we said, I mean, I'm directing uh, together with Annette Aris and INSEAD, uh, the program uh, with CTAM Europe um, in November. And um, let me give you a, a quick overview um, by showing you this video. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, the bandwidth for you at home, wherever you are, is uh, is good enough. Um, but just as a as a quick uh, overview, um, what we are doing in this program before we dive uh, into the content today. 
CTAM Europe, Executive Management Program at INSEAD. An intensive, comprehensive learning and development experience developed for the connectivity and entertainment industry. A program to help industry leaders stay one step ahead of the changes in our industry. At the inception of the five-day program, we chose to partner with INSEAD, the business school for the world, whose global MBA program has been ranked as the number one program in the world for two consecutive years. Senior executives at the top of the organizations have the time to reflect and think about the seeds and trends of change during the five-day program. The program has helped over 150 senior industry leaders become better leaders throughout the past years. The classes are generally around 20 to 30 participants, and therefore, chances for discussions throughout the week are extensive. In addition, there are some fabulous organized networking and social events. New contacts are made and nourished throughout the week and beyond. We hope to welcome you, all your organization's leaders, onto our next program. Yeah, so this gives you a, a little bit of a, a flavor of what we are doing in this program. But uh, as you uh, have heard, I mean, this program is, is really uh, for participants along the value chain, right? And that's what we really have realized also uh, over the last years when it comes to digital transformation. You really have to have a holistic view. Uh, and that's also what we are uh, addressing in this program, whether it's colleagues from finance, or it's uh, my colleague Noah Eskin from Organizational Behavior, um, who is looking at the org side of a digital transformation, or if it's myself or Annette uh, looking uh, at digital transformation from the technology, the technology perspective, or myself from a customer centricity perspective. But the main goal really is to get the latest insights on these topics. But also, um, we want to make it very interactive using cases where you engage with each other, where you learn from each other, and where you take the learnings home in a concrete um, action plan, uh, which goes throughout the entire week. But uh, with this, I mean, let me dive in today's topic. As I said, we have roughly 30 minutes left, and what I wanted to do is giving you a, a little bit of an overview of what I will be doing uh, in, in this program in uh, depth. And I mean, linked uh, to my book, to the subtitle, uh, as you have seen earlier, uh, what I want to do today is I want to walk you through uh, seven principles, which I think are important if you want to transform your organization in a digital world we are in. And uh, the first one, people who know me, they know that I'm preaching this uh, for the last 20 years, but it's really prioritizing customers over technology. I would still argue uh, too many organiza organizations just have a technology-led approach when it comes to their transformations instead of really focusing on what do my customers want. And that's why I'm saying as a marketeer, uh, of course, uh, I'm always saying you have to have a market-oriented perspective. And uh, of course, uh, when I ask uh, my, my students in class, whether MBAs, executive MBAs or executives, um, what is marketing? Uh, I often get a very narrowed answer, right? Um, if I would ask you what is marketing, uh, hopefully uh, you would see it as I would uh, see it, uh, as a strategic, social and managerial process by which individuals and groups obtain what they need and want through creating, offering, and exchanging products and services of profitable value with others. And here, I mean, I usually ask the question, uh, I know now it's, uh, it's not interactive yet, but we will uh, discuss later. I mean, what are the most important words in this definition, right? And usually people say uh, profitable value, right? We need to create profitable value, which is true. But I mean, this is for me uh, the end, right? And you can only create profitable value if you really understand what customers want, right? Understanding where the value is, co-creating the value, monetizing the value, and then at the end, um, you create value for your organization. But many companies that I talk to, they leapfrog 
and create profitable value, but they don't understand in the long term uh, where to move next. And I'm always saying, um, if, if people want email, don't optimize the fax machine, right? And that's what many companies do. They focus on what they are strong at, what they have always done. And now in this digital disrupted world, we see this with COVID, uh, accelerated by COVID, um, that companies uh, start to struggle that have uh, this approach. And um, here um, I'm showing a study which is already two years old um, that I have done uh, with IBM where we interviewed uh, 12,000 executives. And um, without going into the details here, it was a very quantitative uh, driven uh, study, uh, a structured equation model where we asked uh, almost 100 variables and we wanted to understand what drives digital uh, success. And uh, we grouped all the responses, all the C-level executives here, into these three groups, reinventors, practitioners, and aspirationals. And uh, what you need to understand is that the reinventors were the organizations that are financially successful, while the aspirationals were not so successful. And our structure equation model did show that the number one variable driving financial success was the one you see here on the slide, reinventors excel at using data and digital trends to understand unmet customer needs. Of course, there are other variables like culture, like um, data uh, related questions. There are many other important variables, but again, this was the most important one, right? Do you really understand what your customers uh, need and want? And um, being married uh, to, uh, to a person who is a professor at INSEAD as well and uh, studying neuroscience uh, in her research, uh, I can tell you, and you know it as well, uh, often your customers don't know what they want. So this question uh, is not that easy to answer, right? And um, that's also an important uh, point that we uh, address uh, in this program in, in length. The second one um, is uh, that organizations struggle when it comes to their transformations and optimizing and digitizing customer experiences is um, the question, where should I start? But there are just too many buzzwords. We read about it every day. And um, what could a journey look like? What is a step-by-step -step approach? And um, this is what I realized um, yeah, in my research over the last uh, five years, where we uh, interviewed over a thousand executives and we looked into over 30 uh, studies, transformational studies uh, from successful, but also um, not so successful organizations. And what we realized uh, is that there are three uh, transformational uh, shifts uh, that companies uh, should go through. And uh, the first one uh, is, um, we call it, or I call it, uh, my co-author and myself, um, I call it the digital selling shift. So this shift is really about engaging customers and selling more effectively. And um, again, here for me, uh, if you are dealing with transformation, uh, it's very important to think about, first of all, which shift do I want to address? Right? Each of you, you are at different stages when it comes to digital maturity. Right? While I talk to many companies that really struggle with this first shift, they don't even know how to, um, or have no clue how to uh, engage with their customers through digital technology. While then the second shift, we call it the digital experience makeover, that's what we usually see is the shift that most companies are focusing on. This is really about how do I innovate and enrich the customer experience by leveraging digital technology. And um, this is, uh, again, I, I say innovate um, and enriching customer experience, but you're still focusing on your main solutions, on your main products and services that you are offering. While the third shift is really moving away from it. Right? The third shift, we say the digital proposition pivot, 
Like how do you literally pivot your business model? Right? How do you move to a completely new revenue stream? And I mean, we see this in pharma right now where pharma companies move away from being pharma companies. They want to be lifestyle companies from being um, just reactive, selling drugs to being proactive, um, helping, helping people, right? So here, um, that's the third shift we see. We see. And again, for me, uh, it's very important for you as an organization to understand again, what are the customer pain points in each of these shifts and where do I then finally start? And within these, um, what uh, I call the four W's is um, that, that leaders like you, you have to uh, address four essential questions. The where to play, right? where is the opportunity, how to win, what's your strategy, what to do and then going back to what i said earlier about the program who is needed so here the organizational part right a very important point uh, where i stepped out of my marketing side where i realized with all my programs and, and chats with my colleagues at INSEAD, i mean this is so critical right i, I recently talked uh, to the uh, digital uh, officer of, of michelin uh, the tire manufacturer which, uh, which makes also a case uh, in our book. And he said, you know, digital transformation, that's 5% technology and 95% people and mindset, right? Do we have the right people? Do we have the right mindset, the customer-centric mindset, right? And that's uh, also um, what we, what we um, cover in this who is needed. But having a structured approach like this that's what we realized in our interviews, helps organizations a lot uh, to get this transformational process started, which is a process, a never ending process, where uh, you as organizations, you should take a small step every day instead of uh, just making a few big steps in the wrong direction by following buzzwords, what we have often seen. And I don't know if maybe some of you have read uh, some of the latest research, from Accenture, where they interviewed uh, quite a, a few uh, thousand people, um, that was literally saying that 78%, I mean, re repeating, 78% of all transformations do fail their return on investment goals. I mean, I was really surprised by, by seeing that, or not so much surprised when I sometimes uh, look um, yeah, to the discussions that, that I have with executives. But that brings me to the third one, uh, which is linked to this, understanding and leveraging the key digital trends that are changing the way companies should do their business today. And I mean, here, you, you know all these. Uh, I don't need to go in detail, and I will not go in detail. They, they are coming and going, right? Trends are coming and going. Uh, that's why I'm also uh, saying sometimes we need to make our teaching uh, technology agnostic, right? It's really like, how do I leverage the trends um, that, that are, that are um, yeah, useful for my situation as an organization? And uh, here, um, I, I like this, I, I always show this study because I like it very much uh, from our colleagues at the Digital Lab at MIT, uh, who looked also into digital success. And they created this two by two um, where um, you have on the Y axis, the question around technology enabled initiatives. So do you use and leverage um, technology? And then on the X axis, they have strategic integration. Uh, so literally how good are you as an organization to integrate it into your strategy? Do you have a vision? Do you have clear KPIs? Um, do, you, do you discuss it uh, and, and talk about it with, with all your employees, right? Or do you keep it only at the, at the top of the organization? And uh, what's really interesting about this study is, I mean, of course, if you are a digital expert, and again, I would like to do now a, a little Mentimeter exercise here, um, but um, um, we, we, we want to keep it uh, not, not too interactive right now because you cannot respond. But um, usually what we see is, most of the companies that I'm talking to, they still put themselves into the digital beginner's box. If you are a digital expert, what the study uh, is showing, 
your profitability is up 26% and market valuation is up 12%. Um, but the key question for me is or often uh, that I ask, are you better off as a fashionista or are you better off as a conservative, as an incumbent? And the interesting results of the study, which, which is also, we have to be fair here, which is uh, almost three years old, but the, it still applies. We have done, I've done research uh, with MBAs, which is still supporting this, that um, lots of people say it's better to be a fashionista. But the study clearly shows it's that it's better to be a conservative, right? So because this goes back to our earlier point, if you do not know what you would uh, like to achieve, if you don't know how you can leverage technology to create better experience for your customers, you're just following buzzwords, right? And again, keep in mind this study was for incumbents. If you are a startup, yeah, you want to be a fashionista. I mean, the key difference is you you are burning VC money and not your own money, right? So then it, make, it doesn't really matter. But for incumbents, it is better to be a conservative. Of course, you don't want to be too slow, but I'm always saying it's better to walk in the right direction than running in the wrong direction. If you know how to run in the right direction, of course, run. But given legacy, given mindsets, cultures of, corporates that are around for decades, this usually doesn't work. Right? And that's for me another uh, key thing when we talk about digital technology. Yes, you have to understand um, which trends are disrupting your business, but it's even more important to understand how do you leverage them. And that's how I then also define digital transformation. For me, the important part is the second half of this definition Right? It's a continuous realignment of a new investment in technology to leverage digital trends across functions, but even more important, to create value by engaging target customers at the most important touch points in the entire customer experience lifecycle. Right? So here, really, this technology needs to drive customer uh, behavior, if you will. Which brings me uh, to the fourth one, um, engaging uh, customers uh, in today's world to sell more effectively, right? And also here, uh, this is linked to the first shift where many uh, organizations uh, still struggle a lot. And this is across B2B or B2C, uh, even more important uh, in the B2B business, which many of you do as well. Um, but uh, the key point here really is how, um, how uh, our communication should change. I mean, you read lots of article, uh, lots of research, lots of articles. The last one here from the end of 2019, again, content marketing is critical. But here, how do you, I call it this marketing approach, how do you um, carefully align sales and marketing? Right. And too many organizations, this is also still separated, but how do you align these two and again use and leverage uh, technology uh, to just engage in a, in a smarter way with um, your, your customers? And uh, that's uh, for me um, the point number, number four. Number five, um, this going back to this outstanding signature customer experiences, and also here, I'm often surprised in my classes if we dive deeper into this. So how do we do this, right? So how do we create signature customer experiences? Going back to the um, study I've done with, with IBM, I mean, you remember the number one variable driving success was the one on the top here, using data to identify unmet customer needs. The second most important one is creating personalized customer experiences, right? So again, how you read the spider diagram, I'm pretty sure you got it. The reinventors, the purple line, uh, the aspirationals, remember they were not so successful when it comes to financial KPIs. The gray line, right? So creating personalized customer experiences while almost 90% of the reinventors agreed to this statement, only 20% a little bit more uh, of the aspirationals agreed to this statement. 
But for me, what's uh, very important here, and again, we're talking about almost 100 variables. And on this slide, you see the eight most distinctive variables uh, driving success. And uh, the, the third one is creating thorough, detailed customer experience journey maps. And again, I mean, here we read a lot uh, from uh, consultancies about this topic. Um, but again, we see this um, in the classroom. Uh, this is really critical. I mean, how do you want to optimize the customer experiences, exper experience or experiences um, if you don't know what it looks like? And um, if I ask people, have you ever decomposed your customer journey, right? I, I still hear way too often, no, we have not. Sometimes I, I hear, yes, we have. But then if I ask about how many touch points, uh, you sometimes hear things like, yeah, there's a pre-sales, sales, and after-sales phase. Right? But what I mean by this is really going deep into all the touch points you're facing. I mean, we had industries with over 300 touch points uh, where you then literally understand uh, the key pain points for your customers. And these are the ones uh, you're fixing, uh, leveraging uh, technology. And uh, here I have an entire case uh, in this program focusing on particular on this topic, because I really think this is critical and also linked to my earlier point, uh, if you really want to get a better understanding of where should you start. Which brings me to the second last one, um, which uh, I think is getting uh, even more important in, in times like COVID. I mean, this being innovative as a person and organization. And you might have heard uh, from the research of my colleague, uh, Nathan Fur, uh, who is focusing a lot on this topic, when he says there are two ways of working, the red management and the blue management. Blue management on the right hand side, which is traditional management, which works very well under low uncertainty. And then we have the red management, which, which works very well um, under high uncertainty, the entrepreneurial management. And uh, just yesterday I had a, had a program with a pharma company and 99% uh, of these people were uh, the blue management. And uh, again, I'm not saying one is better than the other. Right. What I'm always saying is, as an organization, you need to have both. So blue management, which is all about optima optimization, maximization, and execution, while red management is all about learning, minimization, innovation. And if you only have one, you fail. This applies also to red management, by the way. I mean, famous example, Elon Musk, Tesla, Right. Finally, as we all know, he hired people that bring in blue management and uh, they are able uh, to, yeah, to get the screws for the tires in time. You might have read about the problem, uh, not getting the screws in time, um, which would never happen at Volkswagen and BMW. But he struggled to create a mass market car because he was so dark red management and he ran that company that way. Right. Well, on the other hand, blue management, uh, five years back, 10 years back, all the BMWs, the Daimlers, and the Volkswagen of this world, uh, thinking about how can I optimize the combustion engine car, right? instead of really thinking about what's the future of mobility. Right? So here you see it's really important to combine these two. And the problem we are still seeing, many companies know this and they try, but then leaders fall back into this what we have always done thinking and into their own approach because they just feel very comfortable in their comfort zone. Right? And this is allowing for the two. We will also discuss what this, what this means in this program from an ecosystem perspective because the other important thing is you need to understand that it's very difficult if you want to do these all yourself. Right? You can outsource red management or blue management. Um, and uh, that's where smart ecosystems, how do you leverage uh, your collaborators, um, comes in. But at the end of the day, again, a marathon runner and a sprinter, if you will, uh, it's very difficult uh, to be good at both as a person. Right? And that's absolutely fine again. You don't need to be good at both as a person. 
But if you're leading a team, if you're leading an organization, you need to allow for more. And that's critical. Which brings me to the last one. And then we, we have, as promised, a 10 minutes uh, for, for questions, which uh, we also uh, address and which I think is so critical, um, making your digital strategy work by leveraging uh, key enablers. And uh, again, um, here uh, the famous uh, Kuoni case uh, that I published and that I use in my classes uh, quite often. As you might have heard, Kuoni, Swiss travel agency, one of the market leaders uh, for over 100 years, um, finally bankrupt because they got it wrong on the enabler side, right? And what are the enablers? So here um, I'm using a framework um, in, uh, from my book, um, from uh, Tony Frost, um, a former colleague, uh, which is Body, Mind, Soul, which I like very much because so far, if you look at the DNA, if you look at the center, that's maybe what I focus on as a marketeer, right? What's the purpose of my business? What's the purpose of my brand? What's my strategy? The three transformational shifts we discussed earlier, like what should I do? How do I transform? Uh, from, uh, from a strategic perspective, but then I need the body, meaning the governance, the systems, the tools, right? Many organizations fail because they do not invest in this, right? I need the right mindset, which again, I would argue is one of the most critical ones. Um, if you do not have the right talent, if you do not have uh, the right culture, uh, within your, your organization, your organization, right, skills and capabilities, um, you cannot transform. And then the soul, which is really, again, linked to, back to what we discussed earlier, having the right values, the rituals, the symbols, the behaviors within the organization. Um, and that's, uh, that's what we use. I think this is uh, also, when I talk to my colleague in organizational behavior, uh, many, um, many focus too much, and they, they say that as well, when it comes to organizational transformation on the culture itself, which again is critical, but at the end, um, if you do not focus on, on the rest, you will fail as well. I'm just writing another case um, on uh, a company, Majid al Futam. I don't know if you heard about it, in the Gulf region which is very interesting because um, Alain Bejani, the CEO of the company, maybe some of you have joined my webinar uh, with him recently, is driving that entire transformation of Majid Al-Futam, who owns um, some of the big malls in the region, some of the, uh, the fun parks, the theme parks, right? we're talking 200,000 employees here. Um, he is driving that entire organizational transformation by focusing on uh, data analytics, right? Driving transformation from the bottom, having a top down mindset culture, but again, having the tools, the systems from a body perspective here, but then also the right skills. And this is where he said, hey, I need the right data scientists, right? The, the right kids, as he said, from school um, that makes that transformation happen. But again, for me, to sum it up, um, bringing all these variables that we see on the slide um, as a piece of the puzzle um, to, the to finish the puzzle uh, is, is really critical, which again, Here's the overview of uh, the key seven steps um, that I would think uh, are important, which again, I will discuss uh, in more detail. Uh, here we only have uh, 30 minutes in more detail in my sessions. As I said, there are other sessions in the program, but yeah, maybe I see some of you uh, in November uh, in this program at INSEAD and uh, we can make a nice uh, picture like this as we have done before. Um, with uh, some of you. But yeah, with this, um, let's maybe, uh, Louise and, and Karen, uh, let's, as promised, use the last 10 minutes uh, for some questions here. Thank you, Jörg. Yes, we do have some questions. I can see one from Char, and also I've got one to the same point. So really looking at the, the, the red-blue managers, 
I think for me, one of the key things was their sort of low uncertainty, high uncertainty, traditional, non-traditional, and underneath was time. And I feel that many companies at the moment in the situation that we're in, are, time is, is a different resource at the moment. They're, they're in the now and, and how do they deal with what's happening right now and adjust to the COVID-19 situation? And how, how does the program adapt to the set of circumstances that we see ourselves in at this, at this very moment? And Charles' question really was along the same lines. How do you see the construct of yeah. ending the programme and how can those people yeah. change from red to blue, blue to red? No, I mean, it's a very interesting question, right? So first of all, I would say, and I don't know, uh, yes, yesterday I published an article on Instead Knowledge. My content actually hasn't really changed thanks to COVID. What I see is COVID accelerated what I already said to companies and leaders, you should have done five years ago, right? Again, when Alain Bejani on this webinar, he said, um, you know, I think we luckily started our transformation two years ago, and now we are managing the pandemic better than others, right? So um, this is why also back to the three shifts. I mean, COVID is really an accelerator, unfortunately, where many companies now are forced to uh, apply digital to their business. And uh, where I was saying, hey, this you should have done three years ago, right? Simple things. I mean, look at INSEAD. I could argue uh, we at INSEAD uh, didn't do a good job in online education. I, when I joined, I said, why do we not have online education? Why do we not have programs uh, that have an online and on offline component, right? And now if you look at our website, I mean, there are 20 online programs that we launched over the last four weeks, right? So you see, uh, I think lots of what we, what I teach uh, is accelerated by COVID. Um, and uh, yeah, I, of course, in the program, we will talk a little bit about this more. But also uh, maybe to, to Charles' uh, question here with the red and blue management linked to this, can people change? Very difficult, right? Going back to this picture here, if you are a marathon runner, you are a marathon runner. You are an expert. You cannot run the marathon in two and a half hours and you run the 100 meters below 11 seconds. It's very difficult. And my colleague uh, Ian Woodworth is researching this. Uh, it's very difficult to change as a person. But again, that's fine because you need both. If you are a senior leader, you could even argue it's better to understand how you monetize, how you execute how you maximize but if you only innovate for the sake of innovation very difficult but again if you understand as a leader and that's for me the critical part how to run your company to allow for the red management you will be successful i mean i'm to be honest i'm personally i teach this topic but i would not consider me as red management i'm maybe too german right i'm too german too structured <laughs> right i'm completely blue but again, if I, if I allow for it, and if I know how it works without being good at it, that's, that's all you need as an organization. But again, I don't wanna, I, we still see people change, right? So don't get me wrong. So you can learn to be creative. You can learn to be innovative, but uh, it is difficult. Um, and another question here, a couple coming in now so, uh, from Mike. Do, do you understand and agree with the strategy behind the ongoing consolidation between cable and telephony groups? Liberty O2, for example, and also between SVOD players that we're currently seeing. So that's an interesting one. Of course, that's very, uh, very related uh, to your industry, uh, where um, I would say when it comes to, uh, it, I mean, right now, I would say the cable, the, the, so what you say the consolidation is depends on what the future products look like right it goes a little bit back to uh, the proposition pivot uh, that we have that i discussed earlier right so what does a potential future business model uh, look like and how do you how do you address it i mean right now it's it's i it would be a hard time to say uh, today whether this is the right thing uh, to do right now. And this goes also back, um, which I haven't addressed earlier, 
when it comes to uh, innovation and new business models, how you approach the market, uh, how do you make uh, test and learn, if you will, cheap, right? How do you understand, how can you go into this and uh, without betting on the wrong horse, right? So, um, and that's also, I think, an important part we address in the program, or so this is a very uh, specific question for your industry. Um, but how can you um, try out as an organization without putting yourself into too much risk, in particular financial risk? I hope that uh, Mike uh, helps you um, with, uh, with this question. And a question from Navdeep Sharma. With multiple customer journeys and numerous touch points across offline and online platforms, what would a good strategy be for a seamless experience and experience that delights? Yeah. No, and here this goes, this is a very good question. This goes back to uh, the IBM study uh, I was uh, showing here, here earlier, right? So, and here it's not this one size fits all. I mean, it's, it's really you have to understand three things, right? Your digital maturity, your customer's digital maturity, right? And how do you bring these together, right? So again, I see way too many organizations um, that follow these buzzwords, but if you focus on a specific segment, which is less digital mature and you give them too much, we know this, there are famous examples um, from Apple, Apple Newton, right? The most famous example, they will not adapt it, right? So that's why you hopefully, going back to my first point, this prioritizing customers over technology, right? Who am I after? How much can I push them, right? Of course, you, that doesn't mean you cannot push them into technology. But you really have to understand where do they stand today? How do they adapt technology? And going back to the slide here, you have to really decompose and understand your entire customer journey. And there could be multiple journeys by second, right? And then I would argue you, you start thinking about the above the line customer journey and the below the line, the blueprinting, where you bring these two together to your point to create seamless um, customer experience. But a seamless customer experience, last comment here, doesn't mean um, that you have to maximize digitization, right? That's why I choose in the title of the world, it's about optimizing digitization. Again, too many companies, technology-led approach, they just maximize it. And a question probably really close to many people's hearts, many companies' hearts right now. How does one move an organization from customer experience transformation to a digital transformation of the entire organization and digitizing the sales process? Yeah, that's a, that's a very, <laughs> very good uh, question here, Jivesh. Yeah. Um, thanks for asking. I mean, it goes, it goes a little bit back to the last slide, right? So. Uh, again, where I'm as a marketeer, I might say exactly what you said. It's not just customer experience. That's what I would focus on. But again, that's why I also think it is very important. Um, I, I really, when I enjoyed this interview with uh, Alam Bajani, I'm sorry for going back to him, but this top-down approach with the leaders describing the vision setting the vision, setting the objectives, setting the KPIs, measuring the process. But then on the other hand, while you have that top-down approach, you drive the entire, as you said, uh, organization, digital transformation of the organization through a bottom-up approach, right? I often hear uh, the discussions around digital transformation. They end in the boardroom, right? They end within the top, uh, management instead of really bringing everybody into board on board and again here we could talk a lot about again this framework here allowing people that's where the red management again comes in allowing people to talk loudly allowing for failure uh, allowing for test and learn right only uh, by doing an approach like this uh, you can really transform really transform your organization instead of just having it on paper uh, done by the top management. Fantastic. I think that's most of the 
most of the questions. And, and, and I think from my side, that there's the whole element of trust that you mentioned. People's mindset really has changed. I, I, I'm feeling that there's a lot more trust of digital from uh, our, our customers and our clients. The internet has really shown us what an amazing thing it, it, it can be and, and, and how we do need to change. So I think um, the course, by the way, has moved to November 8th to 13th uh, of November this year. So um, great timing um, and essential probably for, for everyone these days. Thank you very much, Jörg. And I'll hand back to Karen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, both of you. That was a really fascinating presentation and it was a really great taster as well for what everybody can expect in November. So some great questions here as well to test Jörg's knowledge. Um, thank you for all the questions. If anybody wishes to watch the presentation again, the recording will be uploaded on the members only section of CTAMEurope.com. And if this has whet your appetite for executive learning, then you can email info at CTAMEurope.com and we'll send um, all the information. We have got free membership until the 1st of July and a 20% discount on annual membership of CTAM Europe. And then next week's webinar is Jack Davison from 3Vision on the topic of Quibi, the $1.75 billion bet as short form. Um, so thank you again, Louise, and thanks, Jörg. It was a really good presentation that we really enjoyed it. No, thank you for setting it up and thanks for the part participants for joining. Feel free to connect. Feel free to send me emails if you have follow-up questions. Yep, definitely. And hopefully they'll see you in November as well. And I'll follow up with everybody. I'll send over um, a copy of the video and an email with a brochure as well with all the information on. So thank you. It was really enjoyable and wishing you all a fabulous rest of the day. Thanks, Louise. Thanks, Jörg. Thanks, Thank you. Stay healthy. Bye. Bye. Bye.